Hi there, Carl Boltzmann here. Welcome back to the studio. In this video, I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to take the same songs that DJ Shadow sampled, and I'm going to make my own version of Midnight in a Perfect World, but by using different parts of those songs. So what I want to demonstrate is what would have happened if DJ Shadow had run into these samples on a different day at a different time. Maybe he was in a different mood because when we're producing music, so much of what we make are happy little accidents as Bob Ross uh, is so famous for saying, but it's so true. So I'm going to try to demonstrate that today. Oh, if you want to hear the final version and don't want to watch me create this, just go straight to the end of the video. I'll have it segmented in chapters on the bottom of this video. And if you haven't seen my video where I deconstruct and reconstruct Midnight in a Perfect World by DJ Shadow, you can check it out here. I'll have a link above me here and below. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the basic keyboard. I'm going to keep the notes. So one thing I had to do was figure out what the notes were. And then what you can do in Ableton Live is there are two instruments, one called sampler, one called simpler, and they kind of do the same thing. You can take any sample basically and play it on a keyboard. So if, if, if I were to sing like, ah, uh, and then I put that in the simpler sampler, it'll pitch shift it for each key. You can play anything you want to. And so in this case, what I've decided to do was I took David Axelrod's human abstract over here at the end of the song, the same place that DJ Shadow sampled uh, the kind of lead line in Midnight in a Perfect World. Whenever you're sampling something like this, what you want to find is one note that you don't want to find a chord. You just want to you find an isolated note. If you're going to be, you know, making your own chords with it, otherwise you'll have just a mess. And so in this case, we have, you know, there is some bleed from the other notes there, but you have a pretty strong single note. And there's obviously some vibraphone going on in the background too, which we're going to have to EQ out. That's another one we could use potentially. But what I've decided to do here is um, to uh, take the notes of the uh, keyboard sample and use that piano there as, as one of the layers for the main keyboard. So I'll show it to you right here. The drums themselves, I've decided to use two things. One thing, I, I did use the same break that DJ Shadow used to make these drums here. I wanted to make the drums a little bit more loungy, a little bit more David Axelrod-y. In fact, I wanted to make this whole song a bit more David Axelrod uh, inspired. And so the drums here, they're definitely electronic sounding, like the, the hi-hat itself. There are only two hi-hat samples in there, two unique ones in the break. Tried to make it a bit varied. And so those are one of the one of the drum elements. Now I wanted to make it sound a bit more like it was maybe produced by David Axelrod. And so what I did is I went through his song Human Abstract because the song was made in I think 1969. One thing that they were doing is they were experimenting a lot with stereo. And so producers were playing around with this a lot. And then one of the things that they did uh, back in this day was put they often put the drums say all the way in the left channel or the right channel and then you'd have the bass in the right channel and in the case of sampling it's actually quite useful because you can pick out parts and pieces and when it's exclusively in one channel the left or the right you can just choose that channel and then that's all you hear you're excluding say the bass or you're uh you're soloing the drums essentially from a sampling perspective it's really good you'll hear the drums in the right and the bass in the left So I'm just going to go to the right channel here. You hear how, loud, how much louder the drums got, right? I mean, there's still some bass. Now let's go to the left channel. And where did those drums go? Well, they're just on the right channel. There's still a little bit of bleed from the recording. And so this is the way that things were mixed back then. And it's quite helpful for us right now. So one thing I realized when I was listening to this is I think that I can take some bass because it's this beautiful bass i'll put it in the left channel and just take a listen to the bass
Like, it's almost isolated. You can hear the vibes in the back, and when the piano isn't playing, it's basically just bass. So what I'll do now is I'll show you the bass line that I picked out, and then I'll show it isolated, and then I'll put it in with the rest of the song. And so one thing I had to do was EQ out some of the high because I was pitch shifting the bass to match the notes for the keyboard. It kind of made the vibe sound a little bit weird because the vibes, there's this chord going on in the background. And anytime you're pitch shifting like that, it's just gonna change the key and it's gonna sound, it just sounds a little bit weird. And you can still hear that a little bit. But when everything else is in, it's not, uh, it's not too bad. So let's listen to the drums on the keyboard. There's a song called Sower of Seeds by a band called Baraka that DJ Shadow also sampled. Which you might, you would recognize if you know Midnight in a Perfect World. So I didn't want to use that part, but one thing when you're sampling like a full song, here's a little tip and trick for anybody out there. You want to go to parts where there's like an abrupt stop. So at the end of the song, for example, is a great place to find things you can use. Here's the end of uh, Baraka Sower Seeds, the last note. Now the rest of the song is useless from a sampling perspective. Like it's just, it's just a mess of noise. But this last note, again, it's an isolated piece. And so I've kind of used that as like a crash symbol more or less. That's that ding, so I've pitch shifted it to match the, uh, the key of the uh, keyboard. And so again, when I was listening to David Axel Rod's Human Abstract, uh, because the drums were also isolated in the right side, I figured why not take some of those drums because they're kind of, you know, they have a similar vibe to what I've made here uh, with the other drums. And so I did that and I'll show you what they sound like. And I'll show you what it sounds like with the bass and everything else. So I kind of have these two drum beats. I've got one a little bit left and one a little bit right panned. As a bit of a homage to David Axelrod and 1960s drum production. And so that's what I've decided to do here. It's a little bit unusual to have your main drums panned a little bit to the left, but then to me, when the other drums come in, it kind of evens it out, makes it sound nice. DJ Shadow sampled Human Abstract by David Axelrod for the keyboard, but I've managed to also grab a bass line from that song and drums. And so I'm just trying to demonstrate the amount of things you can do with sampling is really just endless. It's just a matter of how much time you want to put in and uh, how much effort you want to put in. You know, you can take just about any single sound and build a song out of it. It might not be the best song in the world, but you can totally do it. There's nothing stopping you from doing that these days. The rotary connection, Life Could, is where the drums come from in Midnight and Perfect World, and that's what I've used to make my drums here. Um, but I've also decided to go through that song and I found another sample to use. I'll show it to you here. So it's those horns. 
Well, I had to pitch shift them to make them fit. I think they sound nice. There was also from the same song that uh, DJ Shadow sampled to get the keyboard in Midnight in a Perfect World, this keyboard here. At the end of the song, the artist does some crazy bass solo. Anyway, I sampled a bit of that too. not a finished song but if anybody wants to hear what i've made uh feel free to dm me on twitter or instagram and i'll send you a copy of my version of midnight in a perfect world So that is my reconstruction of Midnight in a Perfect World from a different universe or a different timeline. It is what could have happened if DJ Shadow had run into these songs on a different day at a different time. So I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next week.